Right, so good evening everybody. Uh, well, good morning, midnight actually here in the UK. Uh, good evening, Eastern Time. Um, so tonight, um, yeah, for episode 252, we are going to have Miss Mila Bell. Okay. Um, if you watch this, uh, the episode earlier on with Vagelis, I'm, I'm again, I'm, I would like to apologize, apologize to everybody for the uh, bad connection that we've got and bad audio. So fingers crossed, it's going to run smoothly tonight. Okay. Um, without further ado, we're going to have Miss Bell. <clears throat> there you go. Good evening. Hello. And of course, my co-host for tonight, Guru Brian. <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah. <laughs> good evening, guys. Good evening. How are you? How are you guys evening. doing tonight? Pretty good. Good evening, Guru Tom. Good evening, uh, Miss Mila. How are you? All is well here. All right. As I said, fingers crossed. <laughs> Everything's going smoothly. See, now you're just jinxed everything. All will be well. <laughs> so, guys, if you are watching this uh, podcast, please uh, smash the, hit, the like and the heart button. And please tell us where you are watching from. And please say hi. Okay. Hi, Alvin. What's up, man? Yep, Alvin from San Francisco. Hey, girl, Alvin. How you doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just about to say, I'll be there next week. No, 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 not next week. Yeah, I, next week. <laughs> Fisherman's Wharf, man. Fisherman's yeah, Wharf. yeah, I know. I know. Shift the heat. <clears throat> yeah. It is good. Yeah, it is good. It's awesome. Yeah, and hopefully next year in the camp in, in Florida. Yes, you better you come. Go. Yep, 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 yep. Let me know, let me know, let me know. Okay. <clears throat> so, as I've said, good evening, everyone. Um, tonight, we've got Miss Mirabel of San... How do you pronounce it? San Dugan. San Dugan. Or you can call it SD Kali. Well. Come on, Gurudin. I mean, Gurudin, you're a Tom. Suddenly, my mind went blank there. And also... Um, uh, um, Mila is also connected with, with FMA Connect as well. So we're going to talk about her journey, um, martial arts, FMA, um, who inspired her or who coerced her to get into FMA, <laughs> who tricked her to get into FMA, and uh, <laughs> um, also how she got involved with FMA Connect. Okay? Um, Without further ado, floor is yours. Oh, wow. So, yeah. so one thing I didn't speak on last night was um, before I did any martial arts, I wanted to thank my mom, who, um, who was the first person who taught me how to punch and kick. Uh, because... <laughs> Yeah. Nice. So, so as, yeah, as a, as a kid, as a kid, I was very small and I was usually like a little different. Like I was, you know, when I was in Japan, I was little and I was not full Japanese. So they kind of thought of me uh, yeah. as different. You know what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. And whenever you're a little bit different, you can often be like the target of some kind of being picked on or bullied yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I got my first little taste of what racism was in Japan. Mm -hmm. As like a three-year-old, I got pushed down the stairs by a kid mm -hmm. who called me a foreigner in Japanese. I think he called me Gaijin. Yeah, and Gaijin. pushed me downstairs and I, like unprovoked, completely unprovoked. Can you imagine? And I had no idea what it meant. So, um, you know, a year later we moved to the States and again, I was a small, small kid, you know, I had to learn English as a second language and my mom didn't want me to get bullied. So she said, you have permission to stand up for yourself. And so she taught me how to punch and kick. And I remember her putting her hands up and she's like, okay, this is how you punch, you know, this is how you punch. And she's like, hit my hands. 
hit him harder. And I remember that. And she, she showed me how to kick and she's like, don't, any, don't let anyone put hands on you. Yeah. Like, you know, don't look for it. But if anyone puts hands on you, you're allowed to stick up for yourself. So mm. I appreciate that. I think that um, it prevented me from becoming a target of bullying or at least, you know, being traumatized by mm. bullying because as soon as anyone decided they wanted to bully me, they regretted it. Immediately regretted it. Uh, stand your I ground. Can, I, just I, always, you. I have <laughs> always stood my ground. I don't care how big you are. I, you know, I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you say. I will always stand my ground. And I appreciate that. Yep. Best so, lesson from mom. Mama Bear had it. Yeah. yeah. I so appreciate that from her. <laughs> She's so happened in her old age. She probably would not be proud of saying that now. <laughs> she can't watch this train. She hates it. She cannot watch this train. She doesn't want me to get hurt or anything. She hates everything I do that is dangerous. So, so you had that warrior mentality installed at a young age already. Then I guess, I guess yeah, that, right. that fight that fight in you already mm. at a young age. So that's that's, that's yeah. Crazy. I'm you know because I think as a kid. You, there's only so much you can say as a kid, you know? That's true. Hmm. You could yeah. be funny, but sometimes you just immediately have to, like, smack back right away. Yeah. And then you can talk. Yeah, element of surprise. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had a kid who thought he could pick on me, and then as soon as I put him in his place, we got in trouble. We went to the office together. I, I drop kicked him in the back. Um, damn. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wanted to be like my best friend. I don't know what happened. Like, well, are, are, are you sure best friend? <laughs> <laughs> Drop cake. What were you watching? Uh, WWE or what? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that was, that was my that was my question. Like that was just blind rage, you know. <laughs> yeah. What well, movies you watch in there? Like, come on. Um, so I, I, the thing I wanted to ask too was like during that time when you were on the island, um, I was stationed in Japan. I was on Masao Air Base, so I was exposed to like Japanese culture. Did, did you get ever exposed to like any karate dojos over there, or any kind of, or is this kind of like nothing? Nothing. Nothing. Uh -huh. So, but had was, you, had you? I was very little. I was very little. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that wasn't even a thought at that time, your parents putting you in karate or anything, or kind of martial arts. No, or, and actually nothing. my mom's, my mom told me later on, she studied, I think, karate in Korea. Wow. At a very, like, hardcore dojo where they, like, hit you with bamboo sticks and Damn. she was, yeah, she was not yeah. about it. She does not like that at all. Got that blood sports. Shit going on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kickboxing too. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that anymore. What you're saying, I I think like there can be a, a wide spectrum between like being a victim and being a warrior. But if you can establish yeah. that you have a warrior spirit right away, you don't have to flex so hard, you know. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. That's true. Because you already like you need that uh, presence. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. And plus, when the rumor gets around that you drop kick somebody, <laughs> you're gonna be like, "What? <laughs> She's not to be messed with." <laughs> they don't want. They don't want that heat. They don't want that heat. No, exactly. Away, no. If you move around a lot, you have to prove yourself at each new location. So. Oh yeah. yeah. You know how it goes. If you're an army so, brat, or if you're, you know, my mom was an army brat. I was not an army brat, but she had that mm -hmm. pattern of moving around for a while. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that basically taught her how to be tough as well. Yeah. Because yeah, she exactly. she had to move around. It was good. Because she she taught you something that is, um, I mean, a, a life skill that is very important actually. Mm -hmm. And yeah. still at a young age, where you get that fight on. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, because I didn't discover I didn't actually enter into a martial arts class till I was like late twenties. 
Oh. Okay. And I really wish that I did because I was kind of a um, troubled youth, a troubled teenager. I mm -hmm. was like a great student as a kid and then I became this kind of punk ass teenager, so. <laughs> <laughs> I like that nowadays though, aren't they? <laughs> I can't believe you, punk ass teenager. Well, <laughs> it actually jokes about my dark ages, they call them, so. Oh, dark ages. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, can you just just tell us like, about your first martial arts, like your introduction? I know you're talking about the capoeira yesterday. Um, so my first introduction into martial arts, I was um, I was a student at Stetson, and um, there was a guy who did a like free Tai Chi class. Mm -hmm. Like one of uh, which style? Which style? I don't remember the style of Tai Chi. Um, okay. But I ended up, you know, he told us he studied at such and such studio, Tai Chi and um, Kung mm -hmm. Fu. So I went in and, and took some Kung Fu classes and I really loved it. I really loved it. And that was um, Choli Foot Kung Fu with um, Sifu okay. David Carr, who was a really great teacher, really wonderful. Um, you? I really, I really loved, I loved Kung Fu so much, but it was all so brand new to me. Mm. <clears throat> That was that was uh, already like somewhat a con uh, contradiction because you got Tai Chi which is soft, Choi Li Foot which is kind of hard. That was just a, that's a nice contrast. I think I think everyone should think about having a contrast of harder mm. activities and softer activities. Yeah, which that's is why true. I think like you know, yeah, <clears throat> go do yoga and then also you know, go box because yeah. I think they balance each other out. Yeah, uh, that's true. You know, that's very true. Yeah. Okay. So after, how long did you uh, do Tai Chi and Choi Li Foot? Uh, maybe like a year or two. Mm -hmm. I have kind of poor time perception. Um, it's okay. Uh, we're not going to create you. Sifu ended, Sifu that's fine. ended up moving <laughs> to. Uh, you're like all this information. Is I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything back oh, then shit. was like. And yesterday or yesteryear, and <laughs> so uh, Sifu ended up moving to uh, like the beach area, and so it wasn't as accessible. And um, I think I ended up moving to Orlando. So I didn't study martial arts again for probably mm, time again. Time is troublesome. I don't know if it was like tenish mm. years. But I okay. discovered capoeira with my friend Viviana. How did you discover it? So, we, I think we watched some stupid movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, that looks cool, right? And um, she found a place to do capoeira, and we ended up going. We were going to school together, and um, I went and tried it. Mm-hmm. And they were doing some crazy acrobatic stuff. So the very first day I tried it, um, I totally sprained my ankle doing some weird flip thing off a springboard. <clears throat> okay. And it like my ankle swelled up like that big. Oops. Yeah. Mm. I, I got a lot of injuries in Capoeira. Oh yeah, that moving around, flipping around and everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I really went to the edge of what I could do possibly. <laughs> but um, I enjoyed it so much because it, it was very much, um, it was like a family to me. Mm. Yeah. And there's so much to it. It's, it's, um, <clears throat> there's like music, you have to learn the language to sing the songs. Yeah. Yeah. You're playing, <laughs> you know, drum or pandera or uh, yeah. bimbao, right? And then you're, we would train for like a minimum of two hours a class. And sometimes our teacher would just like lecture and keep teaching. Three hours later, we'd be like, oh my God, we're all red. Yeah. And, like sweat is all over it the ground. Out. It's just disgusting. <laughs> so, so did you do that mainly for like, was it, obviously it wasn't for like self-defense issues. It was mostly for exercise or? It's like camaraderie and exercise, yeah. and when okay. you 
when you spar it's not like it's it's joga it's like playing yeah 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 so you can <clears throat> test each other a little but we you know it's just, it's it can be really dangerous so if you really do a lot of contact stuff you really have to be a little more advanced mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, but it's 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 quite a, a i would say a very challenging exercise very okay. functional functional exercise whole body and everything mm -hmm. and one yeah. of the instructors that you know just like in any system the the master has his head students that have been around and that they're the instructors too like uh, my friend scooby when he taught he would like to focus on more application styles so depending on how you practice it too definitely there's definite <laughs> application <clears throat> to it you know yeah 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 but i mean by the mere but fact that you're doing that work that is yeah it's, 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 it's a great <clears throat> workout yeah it is yeah, I, imagine yeah uh we do have some uh question question here from patrick um is it choi li foot kung fu san su from jimmy h Wu or ark wong the type of choi li foot that you practiced would you would you uh, remember i don't remember i'd have to ask my sifu um okay yeah all right yeah, and Alvin said Choi Li Foot was also his first martial art. That's so cool. Yeah. Right. So, okay. So, how long did you uh, did you do capoeira for? At least ten years. Okay. Was was are there any ranking? Yeah, I mean, I rank, or... but I kind of didn't. Um, I didn't test after a couple few years. Um. So, people know when you play, what you can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not like big into flips, but I I like to fight. Okay. I, I feel hostility in this. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you feel like, the energy? <laughs> the, thing, you know, like, damn. the thing I needed from martial arts was I needed something that was kind of. Um, I needed contact. I needed to be mm -hmm. able to express aggression in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. basically, martial arts was your like your uh, it's therapy, right. your outlet. Yeah, your outlet. it is a therapy. Yeah. yeah, I I found that I became less anxious. You know, mm -hmm. I could actually sleep through the night. You know, I, I had lots of troubles before doing martial arts and. It's helped my life um, so much. And often, you know, mm -hmm. martial arts teachers are usually like, really, you know, I've had a great fortune. <laughs> I've been very, I've been great, you know, I've been very fortunate that all my martial arts teachers were also very um, kind and, um, you know, gave good advice, like, you know, believe in yourself and, you know, health wise and, you know, created community. And so all these things that um, are an extra good plus of having mm -hmm. a great a martial arts teacher who is also yeah. kind of a nice community leader aspect of it too. Yeah, nah, yeah. it's, it's uh, sometimes if you get, if you manage to join a club that is, that, uh, that's like a family. Exactly. So you feel comfortable um and also it's yeah it's a good way basically to uh, it's a good outlet for any kind of um for any kind of uh aggression or frustration you, you can take it out as you work out just make sure you don't take it out on your partner <laughs> because otherwise it's <laughs> it's gonna be a different thing but yeah uh yeah i mean i've i've, I've been through that as well when i was uh, during my aikido days so I, I learned I learned basically how to channel my my uh, my aggression, my frustration, and everything as I practice. And it's a good way basically for you to learn how to control your emotions while while you're doing your technique. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So before we move on, let's say hi to a few people. We got yeah Patrick. You've got 
Trisha Dong from Trisha. Uh, Hi, Trisha. <laughs> Man, this team doesn't stop with the singing. Uh, we wanted to yeah. hear That's how I'm singing today. Damn. Come Sorry, Jess. <laughs> this isn't, this isn't uh, America's, or America's Got Talent. Or, America's Got Talent. Or American Idol. Or, or like a side or channel or we karaoke or, or something. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that one time. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Miami. Guru Chad. Yeah. Um. So Chad's coming to the retreat and he's teaching. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Chad and his. Yep. Is it the one? In, is it the one this weekend? No. There's next a different week. This. Ah, uh, next weekend. Chad's doing okay. a retreat this coming weekend That's, too. Yeah. His, yeah. His, yeah. His retreat last year was like really good too. So good. Yeah. yeah. Ah, busy man. You can make like a full <laughs> couple weeks of it next year. Yeah, that will be great. Yeah. Take some yeah. time off and hang out in Florida for a bit. What's <laughs> time off? <laughs> exactly. Time on, time... I don't know. <laughs> time is Not existing in this right? world over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, What's that? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's get into uh, like how you were first exposed to FMA and like a story you were telling us yesterday with with your uh, with your now husband how, how that all came together. But let, let's dig into that. Yeah, okay. how were you first? <laughs> how was I first into FMA? Um, so when my husband and I were just dating still. Before that, he had invited me. Um, we knew each other, but we didn't like hang out. And he'd invited me before um, to come try class. And you know how like you have an intention to do something, but it's not fully mm -hmm. on your radar yet, so you don't do it. Mm -hmm. So basically, that that's what happened. And um, when we fought, you know, when we started dating, um, we'd be hanging out, going to the park or whatever and walking, enjoying the nature. And then, you know, he'd have his sticks with him. <laughs> and then somehow Sneaky. he'd end up with a stick in my hand and like, <laughs> you know, he'd be leaning on me and then he'd be like, okay, try this. I do this thing with me. <laughs> so next thing I know, I'm like trying to hit with the stick, right? Kind of awkward at first. And um, yeah, so, that's kind of how it happened at first. Like there was no official class. I just kind of was handed okay. a weapon. And, Damn. Uh, so it's just, it's just oh, I got this stick. Let's do something. Like here's a stick. Smacking the shit of each other on the first date there. It's like. Yeah. <laughs> That's, this is how we handle our, our arguments. <laughs> I never tried that approach before. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an anger therapy session. <laughs> so, uh, so when you start like learning FMA, okay, how are there with are there certain attributes or things that you manage to bring from capoeira or from tai chi or from choi li foot to when you started learning FMA in a more serious way? <clears throat> so serious. Um... <laughs> Let me get my serious face on. Guys, you know, this is fun and games. Um, yeah, so seriously, there's definitely work, you know, parallels and footwork for capoeira. Um, capoeira is, you know, of course, there's a lot more movement, um, but there's parallels in, you know, when you do escaping, right? Yeah. And you do like a little swivel. So in our, you know, in our group, it's called Paiwas. Yeah, yeah. Right? <clears throat> so, yeah. you know, different degrees of that, that is all over Capoeira, you know. Mm. Um, also, you know, moving back, you don't cross yourself. So all those, all those um, kind of ways of maneuvering your body are the same. Yeah, Not exactly yeah. Exactly the same. But, you know, a little bit different in the speed and intention. 
yeah. definitely, you know, the angles, it's all the same, you know, keeping your, um, keeping your eye on your opponent at all times is, is huge in Capoeira because um, you have to, you have to have that focus, especially when you're doing all these crazy acrobatics, the difference yeah. between regular acrobatics and Capoeira acrobatics is unless you're just doing a show, if you're doing mm. it while you have an opponent, you have to always keep your eye on them. Yeah. Even if it's yeah. off for a second, you're back and you're rotating <laughs> and you've got mm. your eye on them. Yeah. And just we'll imagine, it, yeah. I mean, if you get, if you get punched, it's okay. If you get kicked. <laughs> that, that, when you get kicked, it's no joke. Like, yeah, you know. Definitely. Definitely. You get kicked, you get, you know, swept a lot in capoeira. They, they sweep your feet a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's a good experience. Everyone should know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely a rite of passage. And and I liked your point earlier of like, you know, when you do martial arts, you have to learn how to spar and uh, mitigate your emotions. Yeah, that's true. And then like mm -hmm. tune into your body, and you have to mm -hmm. train so much that you are like, okay. <clears throat> How do I spark the muscle memory of all yeah. these drills I did? Mm -hmm. So that's the fun thing too about, you know, capoeira is we would always, um, we would always jogar or spar after so that we incorporate what we learned in class. What was that? What was that called? Jogar, like to play. Sounds like a, like sounds like a mint cologne. They said dracar to war. <laughs> 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 yeah, I thought it was. Um, no, no. Sure. <laughs> hey, it's in there. Yeah. But same um, when you're sparring in FMA, like, you know, if you're doing any kind of sparring or you're doing some um, kind of setup where you have multiple opponent mm -hmm. attacks and, mm -hmm. and you're being tested in that way the pressure the emotion like yeah, it's, it's a good exercise to go through oh, yeah. just so that you get you to have to learn how to hold feelings, it. yeah right yeah, that's true yeah and well, for me and for me too like doing that exercise learning how to spar or doing some pressure testing in class um all those principles can also be taken into life in things that aren't quite so physical because mm -hmm. this, this is my character. This is who I am. This is my character. So this is how I pull martial arts mm -hmm. into life is like I kind of create it like a philosophy. So, you know, I think that's the beauty of doing martial arts is if you give yourself that pressure mm -hmm. to be uncomfortable and figure out how to press through your fears to to work through your fears, because like rare there's rarely anybody who's not afraid and and frankly it's not necessarily healthy to not be afraid right yeah. fear is you fear have to it's face, real you fear have to, you have real. to face your fear yeah so yeah. what we're doing is we are facing our fears and learning how to get through it in a hmm. way that's surviving and then later thriving so you can apply that to life in any number of ways too but with the pressure of the the real physicality of it is, you know, that's a whole nother thing. So, a lot of people don't uh, they don't really they're always too focused on the physical, you know, the muscle memory drills. Mm -hmm. but they're not really focused <laughs> on the mental part of your training. Like you said, coping with stress, coping with fear, uh, you know, overcoming that, learning how to adapt, learning how to uh, to add that into your training for a positive outcome. You know. Um, you got to have that, and that's yeah. That's, I think you said it well. That was well said. Mm. Yeah, exactly. One of the uh, one of the advantages of putting yourself like through sparring or through pressure testing, it's learning and discovering how your body basically uh, responds to stress. Yeah, and your, your emotion basically affects your body because eventually, as like you said. Uh, you'll be able to apply it in everyday life. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I was doing some kind of pressure testing the other day, and I was like, oh, 
you have to learn to become the observer too. Like, okay, I just mm. had this wave of emotion after kind of screwing it up the first time. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let me take a minute and assess what the hell just happened, right? Yeah. And then I'm yeah. like, oh shit, I'm flinching. Like, okay, how do I adjust that? Like, mm. keep my eyes open, get in there. What do I do instead of flinch, you know? Yeah, that's true. Like, keep my yeah. eyes on, but still protect and then move forward, mm. whatever it is. But I'm like, oh God, I hate that I just flinched, but, <laughs> But I did it and I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I want to correct it right away. So as soon as you yep, exactly. can get back in there, exactly. it seems like women are. And not be pissed off about it. The seems that women are better at, at analyzing that too. Like when they're done training, women are better at analyzing like what they've done wrong yeah. versus the men. A lot of men will get pissed off acting emotions, but you know, they're well, going there and want to be. Beat the hell out of somebody with I'm not saying sticks, I haven't but, been like that. I'm saying. Well, no, I'm oh, saying, but like in general, like women. At. Like you can analyze it better. Like when you're all done, you know, doing your drills or sparring, what I, you know, what mm -hmm. I just do with men are kind of just like more on their emotions. Like they want to go in and get their, mm -hmm. they got a couple of hits. They want to get that little revenge thing back. You know, okay, I'm gonna get my hits in. You know, when I go back in there again, but women kind of take their time and like at least uh, like like I said, like the, the people I teach are, are pretty much all women. Um, I have like one guy I teach mostly it's all women, young women, and they Did always you teach like a bunch of young women. How exciting! Uh, well, it has its challenges. Um, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> um, Let me interview you about those challenges sometime. Uh, yeah, sure. No, I would be willing to uh, go on there. That. Uh, but uh, hey, 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 but uh, I, I've, I've noticed. Uh, I noticed that, like, with the guy I train with, like, he's like, if I get him good, he wants to come in. You know, come as hard. But the women, when they train, they're more like, okay, what did I just do? And they try to adapt and they try to go back in there and, and, and do that. I think women just do that better. That's my personal opinion, but I mean, maybe it's well, one to argue it's, I'm guessing it's the format too. I'm guessing yeah. it's the format too, because yeah. um, like, I'll be very honest. Like if I'm, if it's like a long, longer sparring session, mm -hmm. I might react with emotion and, you know, mm -hmm. tap someone back a little or get, I get pissy. I mean, yeah. I'm not above it. I have ego too. Yeah. I just try to dial it back after I realize that I yeah. have an yeah. ego a little bit. Yeah. I, mean, it's not <clears throat> I still want to be the best, you know? It's not. Of course. Of course. Like, deep down, course, I still want to, like, kick ass and. <laughs> yeah, but of course, it's in, in, I want all those things. It's important that you manage to actually see where you're basically, yeah. where your weakness are. Uh, and w where you're going wrong and be able to correct it that th that is really important and that 100%. comes with introspection yeah yeah because yeah. if you actually want to get better you have to learn how to have that constructive <clears throat> criticism mm -hmm. not only from others but from yourself from yourself yeah mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah it's it's one of the things that uh when i was uh, even when i when i teach kali this i always Ask my student, where do you think you went wrong? Mm. Okay, so sometimes think about it because even by feel, you'll be able to actually sort of have, have an idea of where you went wrong. And if not, then yeah, we, let's discuss it. So we, mm. it's really important that they do understand it because uh, knowing knowing how the body responds responds to the mistakes your emotions as well it's it's really important that you're open to it you don't want you don't want to just basically like shun it okay or avoid it or something mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to face it you have to face yeah. it yeah no um i yeah. think even in the small things like you know when you're doing um when you're doing like stick work and you're getting your angles right we always say like okay face your problems when you face your problems, you usually approach it at the right angle. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. I think yeah. you gotta be honest, you gotta be honest with yourself when you're doing your training too. You can't, you know, honest with your mistakes you make. Um, of course. You know, not just be like, well, you know, I just, I think I, I think I did that right. You know, I mean, when you deep down, you know that you didn't do that right. You know, you have to go back and assess yourself again and then go ahead and, and do the drill again. So I think that's, that honesty really in your training is like really important with you going forward mm. with it.
to make it yourself a, a better practitioner. So yeah. um, I want to get into, uh, so we, we've, we've talked about how you first got into your first introduction to FMA. So we know that, you know, this is your, your, your husband's like family system. So, so I want to get into like the dirt now, not the dirt, but I want to get into the nitty gritty of like, how <laughs> is the train because he is the head of the system. Yeah. How it is the train with him and how, like when you guys are training in your group, like, do people What's the like, mix? <laughs> yeah like like how does like, he treat you different than the other people in your in your in your system are you treated better or is this kind of like everybody's treated the same when he's training you guys so um my husband and i are very different in personality mm -hmm. okay and he is um he's kind of like a very intense and serious not always serious but mm. you know when he he has principles and he has mm -hmm. integrity and he's very honest um, almost to a fault mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he he thinks that we should all be treated equally and mm -hmm. he he's a man of principle he's a man of his word mm -hmm. so he does not treat me differently in class mm -hmm. Um, what, 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 are the, what are the challenges of like with, with training with like your spouse? I guess what I want to ask is, is it, do you see him as your husband when you guys are training or you see him as a, like your instructor and your student or? I, I, I have to like, I have to switch a hat or I have to switch my mm -hmm. mentality for class mm -hmm. and not like, I don't call him any, I don't call him baby or honey. Or, <laughs> I call him guru in class so that I don't yeah. mix our relationship yeah. in class. And I, That's good. And mm. for me, I, I'm the one who sometimes, I get pissy sometimes mm. on occasion. I've been better at it lately, but <clears throat> on occasion I slip up and I have to like dial back, but mm. um like your but emotions before get we had like a big class and he and I were just training, that's where a lot of the challenge came in because he is, he was my first teacher and I was going through the, you know, when you're new at something, mm -hmm. you have that long period of, for lack of better, suck. You suck at it for a while. Mm -hmm. You're not good. No, yeah, of you're course. You're not good when you start. We go and, through it. Yeah. So not only was I not good, <laughs> I had to learn from my husband who like, you know, we have a relationship and for me, like my ego of trying to separate our relationship with having him as a teacher was super challenging, <laughs> was not yeah. better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got like very emotional and very um, taken aback and, and it's it's not as easy when you don't have a big class around you. So we we trained a lot just us or mm. just one other person, and so I didn't have that relieving of pressure of having other people around that that he could focus on, or we could all kind of like make each other laugh. Mm. So it was like this very intense like we're dating, you know. <laughs> There's this power dynamic thing. And I feel like I'm losing my power. <laughs> Plus, I suck at it. And yeah. <laughs> it's very I, humbling. It's very humbling, and I just don't think I was prepared to be that humble all the time. Mm. So, yeah, but he has that happy. patience with you, though, because you know you're his wife, so he's gonna have to have patience. That, that patience. I wouldn't call it patience. Because he knows when he gets home, it's gonna be all like. <laughs> I would not call it patience, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's not yeah. the it's like you cook your dinner tonight. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You got that after class vibe. Like when you go home, it's like, okay, and now I know what you said in class. Now you're going to, you know, yeah. No, yeah. I'm not in class. No, it was like us training before we had like a big class around. Yeah. So it was just I know. a lot of pressure, just me and him. And yeah. Because I know me. Upset. like. When I train my wife, it's like easily. very, uh, <laughs> I get frustrated a lot. Like I'll show her a technique and I have to show her like four or five times. 
sometimes I'm like, all right, I gotta take a break, go in the house, and then come back up again. And, right. <laughs> yeah. So, so I feel the pain. I feel the pain. I've been there. right. So you know, when I've it's family there. too, it's like nobody yeah. wants to hear what you have to say. Sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. someone else could say the same thing to her or him, and they'd be like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, you know, cool. And then you yeah. say it, and they're like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going inside the house. <laughs> but there's this intensity. I think I was also taken aback because there there is this um kind of intensity with FMA and weapons. Mm -hmm. And um I had to break through some of my own issues um because I think I was getting triggered sometimes, like reminders right. of things that have happened to me in the past. I see, yeah. Didn't really okay. have to do with him, you know? Mm. So mm. like I had to work through a lot of that, you know, that mm. kind of stuff too. Mm. So there was like layers of challenges and um now now no problem. Like mm. we train great together in class. Um we're a really good team. Mm. Oh, that's um, good to hear. Yeah, like now, now I feel fluid in the art, you know. But it's kind of like when you learn a new language. Yeah. You know, like you <clears> move somewhere <throat> you don't know the language. I am mm. an artist. I want to immediately be able to express myself like it's an art. Mm. And that was frustrating. It's like you know, when I traveled, I I was in France a long time ago, and it, it was like at a party, nobody spoke English, unless mm -hmm. they were feeling sorry for you. And I wanted to be a part of the party, you know? Yeah. I want to be able to laugh and make jokes too, but like humor is more of an advanced part of the language. Yeah, Same with like, it, yeah. FMA, like, you know, I see mm -hmm. how awesome it is. I see how beautiful, how how strong it is. You know, I, I see the weapon work. I want to be able to flow. I want to be able to pop. I want to be able to move. Mm -hmm. And I, I wasn't there yet, but I saw it. And, and my personality was like, I want to be there. I want to be there. I don't know how to get there yet. So. Mm. Uh, that's another thing we want to talk about was their, was their art, right, Guru Tom? Do you have any pictures? Yeah. Do you see any pictures? Do we get any pictures? Or do you have an artwork I you want to show us? today. Um, I have a couple pieces. I have. Yeah, for I was a Taliban. For people who don't know, uh, uh, Miss Mila is a uh, Mrs. Mila is a uh, artist. She does a lot of metal work and uh, sculpting, right? It's also sculpting. sculpting as well. Yeah. So uh, I just wanted to ask you, like we talked about this yesterday, like do you get inspired by any FMA, like when you do your art pieces, uh -huh. like tribally I wise, or anything? maybe subconsciously, but um so most of my stuff looks like i make my own symbols it's very kind of simplified mm -hmm. but everything kind of looks like it could also be a weapon can do you have something to show us in the back sure yeah. that would be let interesting me, let me I, I like that in the back yeah Hold on. this is all hand done everybody i'll, I'll put, put it against the door yeah and uh yeah Yes, I like that. Ooh. It almost reminds me of a Coca Pelli like we have here in New Mexico. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, it's it's all it's all metal. It's all done by hand. I appreciate good art. So like, I'm an artist myself. So I like to uh, to recognize people who do great art. That, that, I like that one right there. That one wow, like that the is awesome. I like the hands on it. Yeah. Are, are, are those for sale? I guess what? <laughs> I guess what I'm <laughs> yes, they're for sale. <laughs> uh, okay. Shall we do beading? <laughs> you know what that one actually reminds me in the back? You've seen Pan's Labyrinth where that guy put his hands in his, he had the eyeballs in his hands. Oh, yeah, he's like. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that one, yeah. I like that. It's cool. It's kind of like, uh, not creepy, but it's like the hands. It's just kind of like, I don't know. I like, I like stuff like that. So, so what, what kind of sculpting that you do, Mila? So that particular, um, those pieces are made from um, cutting steel with mm -hmm. either a 
plasma cutter or an oxyacetylene torch. So I'm basically melting the steel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Which do you prefer do using? Which what? Which do you prefer using? The plasma or the oxalene? I, I just like, I like the plasma cutter because I can get a finer um, cut. Right. <clears throat> And do you, like, you age those, right? You put patina on them and stuff like that? Or are they just naturally aged? Or Yeah, I naturally rusted those, but I have some newer stuff where I'm doing like a dioxide finish now. Awesome. Mm. Awesome. Which is fun, actually. It's really fun. And I, I am going to get a piece here soon from her. So, like, I know people are going to say, oh, yeah, um, you're yeah, advertised, I... but you don't have anything yet. I'm working <laughs> on it, guys. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Right now, uh, Katie. <laughs> Katie, uh, Katie Aber? Abner Go, from Leverage yeah. Fitness, and yeah. yeah, she bought a piece. Yeah, and uh, at the end of the show, we're gonna get a website so people can go there and, and uh, yeah, and share the link. Stuff. Yeah, I have a bunch of stuff, stuff on Instagram too. Um, website's not that great, but uh, okay. Um, yeah, those two pieces I'm delivering to a show tomorrow, but you, you take custom requests too, right? Like, or you just anything people want or is it just kind of like what you create? I, I can do customs. If depends. you sell that one, it I want that one on the person. <laughs> I won't just do anything. Uh, Cause uh -huh. you know, part of the beauty of what I do is, is they're all original designs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't necessarily mm -hmm. want to make some regular ass Nike yeah. symbol or something like that. But yeah, I will. yeah, yeah. I've done a custom piece where I did a, a really nice design that's like a built-in for a gate. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Where I did like yeah. these giant, um, giant like fence panels. Oh yeah, for the private security gates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I got a friend who does some stuff similar to you that does it here. Uh, he makes out of copper. He does like a lot oh, of stuff. Oh cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I want to play with copper too. Yeah. I have a sheet, but. I, I can't do that. I can't do that stuff after work because I do sheet metal work all day. So I just can't home. I can't go home and create <laughs> stuff with metal. I've seen metal all day for the last twenty eight years. So it's like I don't really want it to. Do you want to have some break from? Uh, no, making no, make the trainers was like a thing. Like uh, to, uh, I do this all day, and it's just like, but yeah. But anyway. I thought you were doing the trainers with wood. Oh, you're doing it with both, right? Um, I'm do I do it from composite aluminum. I can make it. Any, we got access. I got access to any kind of exotic alloy you can think of. Um, but, you know, <laughs> oh, just, nice. Like, like just, uh, yeah, I guess I don't know. <laughs> but enough <laughs> of me. Let's go back to the group. Uh -oh, my bad. <laughs> Nita, has has at some point FMA uh, influence uh, your art, the way you do your art, or the other way around? I think everything blends into each other, but um, as my stepson says he likes my art because everything looks like it could also be used for the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. It, looks, it actually looks like a weapon. Some of that stuff. So, I mean, you see, I have like daggers and arrows and just about everything. It looks like it could be a shield, almost. Yeah, <laughs> there's other stuff too, like I, or it looks like I have anchors and arrows and. Yeah. So you're pretty much ready for the zombie apocalypse then. <laughs> yeah, my art is multifunctional. Like, <laughs> we could also we need, be pale zombies and. <laughs> we did. We did an FMA discussion. <laughs> 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 did I say that? I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> So with, with, your, with your training, with the system, um, what would you say would be your favorite? Uh, I'll ask this to every female practitioner that I've interviewed. What's your favorite weapon? Uh, blade, stick, palm stick, knife, mm. polo? What do you feel most comfortable training? What do you, what do you get more most enjoyment out of when you're doing your flow, when you're, you're drilling? Like, what do you like to train in? That's just what I'm trying to ask, I guess. I, I like... I like training stick just because I've trained it more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also like a single <clears throat> blade a lot. Like a knife, just a knife or a uh, bullet. So I've been also like starting to train with my live blade just 
It's like my own. <laughs> my husband made this for me. Wow. Yes, Is that a pinuti? Or a talibong? It's his own design. It's kind of a, That's awesome. It's like a hybrid kind of, yeah. yeah it, this guy does hybrid. phenomenal work, and I think he hasn't got a lot of credit, but he, he does great work. Mm -hmm. mm. So, yeah. Draw it. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, it's wow. It. It's like a Sansa bar almost. Uh, kind of. I this. Hybrid. Yeah. yeah, it's a hybrid. Panuti Sansa bar kind of. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So it's it's very swift. I love it. So I, I really enjoy this. So yeah. If I had more space in my room, I would do a little. <laughs> we want you to start chopping curtains off and shit in there. <laughs> yeah, right? I see material flying off and shit in there. Like, oh, I'll get a haircut. Uh, yeah. the walls, you know, there. It's like, oh. A slash on the screen. Yeah. I, I love it. this. It's got... <clears throat> yeah. Like he designed every part for me thinking about me. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we'll put his link on there too so people can get his blades. Uh, he sells a lot, of, a lot of awesome blades in there. So um, yeah, I love training with this because no matter how much you train with, mm. with sticks or, or <clears throat> with trainers, mm. you don't get the full feeling until you have no. The yeah. real steel and a real yeah. blade, it makes a difference. Yeah. This is sharp. You're, you're a lot more yeah. alert, a lot more alert, and a lot more Yeah, careful. this is sharp, so you're not <laughs> going to do all the crazy stuff. Shit, I remember the first time I did my life low blade, almost cut my damn finger off. It was with a Santa bar. <laughs> uh, I wasn't right? paying attention. Someone was distracting me, and I was like, oh, shit, I almost cut my thumb off. Like, uh, you, you, <laughs> really have to, you really have to respect any weapon, yeah. any weapon in your hand. It's like a firearm, yeah, and, they, yeah. and they feel different too. So I think it's such a good um, experience mm. to like really respect and feel, get a feel mm. for your weapon. Um, yeah. Not all weapons are equal, you know. Mm. When yeah. you learn, different when you learn to stick, you don't really. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff with the stick, but the way oh, you're yeah. gonna, yeah. the way you're gonna move with. Uh, Blade is, blade is totally different. different. Stick is, mm. well, stick is impact. Yeah, but you still have that age awareness, though, even with a stick. Like I know when I train you with stick, should. Like, yeah, you should always have that instilled. Like, <laughs> you should. It's a mm. really blade. Just like a gun. If you have a rubber, rubber gun, it's just they treat it like a real actual nine millimeter <laughs> or forty five. Yeah, same. You know? Like so, same thing. But same thing. Even with you know any kids, if they have a projectile weapon or a play mm -hmm. gun. I like I would say, around. don't uh, like, don't even point that at me. Like, don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would exactly. uh, would you at one point like to uh, make your own blade from sculpting? I, I've, I made um I made a knife before. How did you? Just did fully ah. Yeah. Okay. Critter. <laughs> Yeah. Get back in there again. <laughs> no, I, I did. Um, I used um, I used titanium instead of steel. I think I'd like to do it with steel next time. Oh yeah, titanium. Oh. Like it was it brittle. was cool, but it was just brittle. like it's it's a little different. It handles differently yeah. with the belt grinder and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The white white yeah, sparks the... coming off. Yeah, it's a little interesting, yeah. but um, I would try it again. So yeah. I have the I have I have another another million dollar question. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you can give me a million dollars. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I got some monopoly money right here. Come bring that over here, kids. Uh, <laughs> uh, so my question is, and I think this is uh, uh, we ask like pretty much every female tactician is on here, right, Guru, Guru Tom? How do yeah. we get how do we get more women in FMA? How do we how do we attract more women um, into the arts? Um, how do we recruit more women? How do we get more women involved? What's your What's your take on that? Um, well, I think you have a good start and just like uh, have you know. I think it was a good start to have more women on you know and and involved, but also mm -hmm. like um, more leadership as far as women concerned. Mm -hmm. um, I think that. I think like all people, not just women, like encouragement. 
Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and to feel supported um, and um, represented. So it's good mm -hmm. to see that y'all are interested and mm -hmm. want to know yeah. what's going on with us. Yeah. And not just as women, yeah. like women want to be respected for doing well, like for being human and not just, you know, yeah. She's good at FMA for a woman, or like, mm. oh, look at that girl. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like we, we, you know, so, we want to be seen as people with, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so how how do how do we uh uh? Sure, oh, sure. <laughs> so, 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 how, so how do we as how do we as men how do we as men help our sisters in the art out like to make them feel more comfortable to make them okay. um like. Just to just to get them involved more, I guess is, is what we're trying to say. Like, oh, sorry. 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 Glad it's easy. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's a the, the real the real discussion here is like a lot of women oh. like don't want to be trained with men. Um, when I first started teaching women here, um, they felt kind of standoffish at first, but I had to like you know make them feel comfortable. I you know yeah. I my my wife with them came in to help work with them in training. Just you know, and then it was to a point where she was able to leave, and I was able to 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 take over without her being there anymore where they felt comfortable with me but what, what what do you what do you have like any suggestions like i know you don't speak for everybody but as your own person what what, what can we do as men in art to like get our sisters in the art like more involved working together with us training with us so sharing ideas stuff like that yeah i i think that um <clears throat> You know, I'm not saying that you have to treat women special, but there are considerations that women have different experiences than men. Um, and I think the best way to navigate around that is to have, if you can attract, you know, maybe more mature, stronger women who have leadership qualities, to get them training and involved and, you know, with the intention that you want to promote women into leadership too um it's it's no it's no secret that um you know women are in in spaces and doing amazing jobs at things that you know were more of a men dominated forum um you know i think leadership and representation are two of the best ways um, I know it's hard so if you have women who are um, truly interested in and in enjoying it and you you see there's dedication and discipline you know mm -hmm. just like you would any student any if you have a student that you know is dedicated of course you want to feed them more you want to nurture them more yeah but I think sometimes women need just I don't, I'm not trying to say treat women more special. But, yeah, of course not. Yeah. But for sure, like encouragement and support. If mm -hmm. you see any sense of like, um, if you see someone doesn't come to class or something's a little off, mm -hmm. if you're a teacher, if you're a leader, you know, maybe not right during class, but address it immediately. Mm -hmm. um, as a leader, yeah. as a teacher, you know, see if there's something going on. You know, there might be some either questionable things or mm -hmm. um, things in life that aren't on point or maybe a strange occurrence, <clears throat> you know, like maybe. I think you have to listen, something. to listen. Yeah, yeah, you need to listen and you need to have some yeah. of the right questions. Yeah. To come into play. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why. <clears throat> um, it's important to have women in leadership roles and um, represented. Um, and I encourage not just women, but people in general to um, communicate what they want, what they don't want, mm -hmm. if they have issues from the past that are going to um, be tricky to navigate around if they have, mm -hmm. any, you know, past traumas. If yeah. if there are people in class and you're like just basic stuff, like 
if you're in class and you're drilling and you don't want to get full contact, you know, when you're doing this, like, you know, express how much pressure you want, how much pressure you don't want. Maybe you want a little more pressure. You don't want to be treated like you're fragile, you know, express that. So just some more like good verbal cues in um, when you're teaching, like, hey, if you have an issue, if you want more pressure, like just be expressive. If you have an issue, you know, come to me after class and we'll discuss it. You know, we've even had to, you know, when, when men and women are together, there's issues in sexuality sometimes. And sometimes you just have to be upfront about like, you know. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Don't talk a bunch of shit during class about you have you have stuff, to be sensible. Right? You, know, you have yeah, to be sensible. Like, yeah. Just be respectful. Yeah. And there's you know, some people are just awkward <clears throat> with the other sex. Mm. And that's okay, but like you have <clears throat> to be able to <clears throat> at least try to command the class in a way that's you know, fun, family, professional. I mean, this is just my suggestions, you know. And that's yeah, something I... That's true, that's true. I think, you know, not that I have... There's not a bunch of women in my group, but when they come, I'm so grateful. And I think it is helpful that I'm there. Um, it's not just... It's not just good for the women that I'm there, but it's good for the group because, you know, my husband and I, personalities as a team, we, we complement each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is nice, I know, for the women to know that I'm there. Um, I've had, you know, a student who came because she saw me, you know, training on social media with another woman. And so she wanted to come and train with That's us. That's good. That's good. Yeah. 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 So, when you see it, so if you have women in your group and you post it on social media, not just like, hey, there's girls here, but like they're really training and enjoying it, right? Yeah, they just it. Like you, yeah. you promote it, you you show that they're that we're here and we're Yeah. That remind me of that last we're episode job, I saw. We're training, we're 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 dedicated, you know. That remind me of the last episode saw Cobra Kai and everyone where the, where the dude was trying to recruit <laughs> he was trying to recruit the women and he was going around he was going around to the soccer field and like, hey girls need to join this thing or whatever. You guys kick some guys' ass and like he was going around everywhere and then he found that one girl that almost reminds me kind of similar to what we're talking about. Right. Like, yeah, well, we're girls, being, so being a straight creeper, yeah. you know, coming around and just talking shit. Like, hey, if you want to join a group and there's hot guys there, it's like Oh, yeah, crazy. Stop this guy's there. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's actually true what you said. I mean, yeah, as as especially as teachers, you have to be sensible with the way you run your class, and you have to be able to accommodate um, differences between your students. Not just basically for women, but like if you got like a students who are like challenge in other ways as well you have yeah. to be sensitive to them yeah 100%. not not everyone's yeah. operating on the same wavelength exactly. um, people exactly. come from different belief systems exactly yeah there's so, all sorts of things to navigate so yeah that's um, true. so with yeah. that being said with that being said do you see yourself as becoming an instructor in your system oh hell yeah or if we're not 100%. doing it already, I mean, yeah, like old structure. I, you know, I'm I'm assistant now, yeah. but I I want to teach, and I I welcome opportunities to become, you know, to become a better teacher. Um, you know, to not also not just be. You can be really good at FMA, but it's a whole other skill to be able to teach it too. Is. Oh, yeah. Teaching yeah. makes you a better practitioner, so you know it's it's all a beautiful. It does have its challenges, yeah. I like yeah. it. I mean, yeah. I like it. I mean, I'm I'm not a guru with Tom over here with like 40, 50 years experience, but I mean, I, I have some experience. Oh, you know, like, <laughs> forty years, thirty, forty years, whatever. Well, I know you've been teaching for a while, right, Guru Tom? Yeah, that's true. 
So, I mean, I don't have as many as he has, but I mean, I'm getting, I'll get there eventually, you know, a while. But, yeah. Um, I yeah. like it. I mean, how long have I you been teaching? Me, uh, for about three years now. Nice. That's it. Cool. So, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a young and, yeah, so. Uh, I, 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 I teach, teaching. yeah, I teach my system. Like I don't teach other stuff. Uh, like I, I was trying to get the one for the sea lots and then the Piper when I does Piper so I could teach both of those. Uh, but right now it's just the, the, the FMA system I'm in that I teach. So, okay. um, it's a start, but eventually no, I'm gonna start great. teaching more stuff in there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, yeah. I mean, it's quality, not quantity necessarily yeah um well i want to uh, there's such good yeah. arts that, that i'm studying i want to do sh i do want oh, to teach for sure. each other yeah 100 um, both of the piper and, and the sea lots that i'm learning from uh guru dean are like definitely excellent self-defense stuff that i think everybody should should learn so um if it was like a regular generic art i probably would be like all right i just want to do it and that's it but no nah, like the stuff he has is pretty it's pretty legit and it's it's stuff that i think would be good shared with people to, to learn so, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, a lot Why of uh, come visit your class with all these women in it. Hey, uh, they're college women, they're called. Oh, so you're teaching a college class? Well, no, a lot of the girls go to MS and MSU. One of the one of the girls I teach is actually a stunt woman in the movies. Um, oh, fun. She's, she's, she was in uh, that movie, The Mule, she did uh, stunt work in the movie, The Mule. Uh, she was in that one with Tom Hanks, News of the World. She did stunt work in that movie. Oh, wow. um, okay. She just did a movie with uh, Bruce Willis in here and uh, here in Las Cruces. She did all the stunt driving and fighting sequences in there. So she basically wanted oh, cool. to learn to learn how to do fighting for the movies. Oh, okay. She kind of got absorbed, she kind of got absorbed into the whole like she likes the weapons aspect and she had a background in karate. Um, I think she got a black belt in karate like a long time ago, and then she just wanted to learn like. The weapon stuff is what it was. So, um, well, the other girls mostly want to do self defense. One of them was an assault victim. Um, mm. She just wanted to learn for for self defense so she doesn't get hurt again. Um, yeah. yeah, and and it, it was funny because the people assaulted her was their own fiance. So, mm. yeah, so he was a marine, he had PTSD, and one day he just assaulted her, and oh, so she wanted to learn how to defend herself. Yeah, yeah, so. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is like around here. Like most of the men were kind of like, oh, I don't want you know to get that macho thing. Like well, I know how to fight, I can street fight. I don't really need to learn anything. And the women are kind of like, I want to learn self defense. You know, I want to learn how to weapons. I want to, you know, something that's gonna benefit me. And it's just I don't know. It's just they worked out that way. It was weird. But, you know, everybody's like, why do you have girls in your class? Like, um, I think it's, it's a great fortune. Thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I mean, yeah. they're. No, it's not. I mean, my personal thing between men and, and the women, I think the women are easier to teach than the men. I did have mm. two guys. One guy I don't want to do it anymore. Another guy I have that I teach here now, um, he's sticking with it. But the other guys I had before, that they were like, I don't want to do this. Like, but the women are like, they're fascinated by the by the, by the, by the blade, by the knife, and, and the bolo, and the stick, and they like it. I think maybe it's like you said, like a sense of empowerment, kind of like when they have like that weapon in their hand, and they're winging, swinging it around. And I, I think like um i wanted to bring this up so i'm glad um i think that women aren't encouraged to do kind of very physical aggressive sports as much mm. when they're young mm. so it's yeah. it's like opening these <laughs> like new pathways of expression and mm. and all, you know that they didn't have access to to before before yes yeah so it's like this kind of deep discovery that they get to like do this in fma because you know yeah. guys are a little more physical when they're younger mm -hmm. you know you might fight more you know they get the stop the testosterone pumping when they're younger they don't yeah. want to fight you know? yeah. like, oh. <laughs> yeah when you're older you mellow out you start losing that t you know you start like oh i'm out getting all crazy <laughs> no yeah, yeah well, testosterone it's true actually healthy for it's men. True. To, to a certain extent. It's, testosterone, it's, yeah. It's well, but after you're 40, you start losing your testosterone. That's a whole other subject. <laughs> so you, especially people who have been in the military, like I'm exposed to like combat situations or PTSD, they get a lot, they lose a lot of testosterone. So, uh, but when you're younger, you're raging for it, you know, but when you're older, you're more mellowed out, you know. That's why I was yeah. careful to teach older people 
you know, rather than mm. younger, the kind of the I have were like 22, 23 years old, and they want to kick everybody's ass in the class, you know, and sounds like a Hollywood movie, I know, but it's true. So I had to be like, <laughs> uh, no, nah, this isn't for you. Like, we're not going to yeah. go in there and start kicking somebody in the nuts, or, you know, or trying to break their arm or something like that. You know, we need to, to dial it back, you know. Let's learn yeah. fundamentals. Let's learn right, footwork first. And, it can yeah. be very dangerous. Like, the stuff you teach, you know, FMA can be yeah. very dangerous because yeah. it's... Yeah, definitely, definitely. I don't even teach blade to like later on. Like that doesn't even a factor. Like the first, oh, really? first time you come. Um, no, I don't teach it all. Like to later. Well, that's yeah, the way I, I do it anyway. Like, I don't know how people do it. I think it's funny because it, it was a. Uh, I have I have a friend who I love dearly, but he he got into like he got into jujitsu. Mm. And he he was asking about our FMA classes a lot, and I was like, like bro, just come try it. Yeah, and I'll he's one of those person. He's one of those personalities that he always wants to teach, though. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, like, right. <laughs> he's this like is the way you do it. He always has to be in charge. He's always the coach. Yeah. You know, his other I, side I job can't do is that. A DJ. He's an MC. <laughs> you know, he's always. So he was so resistant, and he was like, well, "Why don't you come hang out with us, and you can, you know, try out your moves with the guys." And I was like, well, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, I could market, but like if I, I can't pull it. Yeah. Like if, yeah. you know, like if you do an elbow break, it's an elbow break. If I market, you're not necessarily going to get that I just broke your elbow. Mm. You yeah, know, it's not a sport. Unless you do yeah. FMA, yeah. then you're like, yeah. oh, okay, like that could be an elbow break. That could be, you know, you just broke my fingers. You just jabbed my eyes out. Like, it's and different than always, rolling on the ground. It's different yeah. than jujitsu where you can, you know, really pull it yeah. and stop it. Yeah. You know, it's different. And you always get those naysayers like, that's not going to work. It's my system. Yeah, no, that's, that's not going to work what I do. I was like, well, I don't know if it. It's not like, effective. I'm like, I can come play around with <laughs> Let me gouge your eyeball out, dude, and let me see if that's effective. Like, right. I'm, I'm like, so there's a lot of stuff like, like it's, it's for survival. It's not, you know, a yeah. sport. Yeah. I we mean, they do, do it have in a sportish sport sport way, but it's not yeah. going to come out the same. Yeah. Like, I can't prove to you without yeah, exactly. proving you that it works. You want to do sport? Here's some padded sticks and hitting them on the ground. <laughs> right. Shit, I'm, uh, yeah, it's like, and I'm not big enough to be like, you know, pull you here and then, uh, you know. Uh, I'm not yeah. big enough nah. to be like. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Tom, you're silent over there. <laughs> No, I'm it's just basically late, listening right? to you. Mr. Sand. It's uh, 1, <laughs> 1 15 a.m. Um, or 17 a.m. And, and <laughs> you're at the time difference there. I forgot about yeah, that. That's true. Oh, uh, no, actually, you, 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 had a good, you, you have good points there when you were discussing about like uh, um, even like dif differences when with, with people's opinion and what what really works what doesn't work and mm -hmm. it, it sometimes it's it's really actually really hard to like uh, come up with a definite um answer of uh what's gonna work and not because even yeah. like outside the violence outside has different dynamics as well so oh yeah I mean, real fights are ugly exactly exactly they're so ugly yeah. i mean yeah. I've been in fights. They're not pretty. Yeah, they're not. That, no, no, no fights are going to be pretty male, female, or anything. It's like, you're always yeah, going to be... I mean, all that shit you do, the drills and everything, is just, if I can go yeah. out the door, I'll be honest with you. So, yeah. Like, yeah. So, Definitely. yeah, it's, actually, it's, it's really important that when you go through, like, your training, your sparring, or your pressure testing, it, it's it's really important that you manage to understand how your body and your emotion react to it. Mm -hmm. Because it's still, at the end of the day, that's what's going to get you through. Yeah. Not not much of how, how technical you are. So, oh, yeah. 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 All the beautiful drills we do, it's, it's just to train your body, but it's not... It's, not, it's, yeah, not going to do a lot of that. Yeah, it's it's a good way basically to create that path for your yeah. muscle to be able to respond to certain things. But yeah, it's not going to be perfect. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not going to be perfect. Yeah, it's good in the gym, but go on the street, like I said, that shit just goes over. Uh, 
a lot of it with that stress and then trying to figure out what to do and <clears throat> nah. just to go out the door. <clears throat> yeah, um, we we had this normally when we run the Saka course, we before we do the um, physical intervention part, we do a pretest. So this is where basically they try to stab each other with uh, with the with, with a training knife. So with the with the lipstick, and they oh, they're oh, wearing yeah. a, oh, the marks, yeah. okay, and they're wearing a white shirt, and um, even martial artists, uh, it doesn't matter what style, they they would always say, oh, okay, my, my 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 technique is gonna hold." Then give them one minute. Right, everyone gets stabbed. It's like. How how did these okay, stabs and slashes get there? They don't understand how. Okay? They don't understand how. Don't so in a knife fight. <laughs> it's 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 an eye opener for them. But but before that, they they they, they are one hundred percent. They know that their, their techniques are basically cut for for all those. Things, but they figure out. Nope, that's what they discover. So that's when. Alice wants to say hi. <laughs> I was wondering who that was. I was like, "Who's that?" Hi, right. Gladys. <laughs> okay, Gladys. Hi, Gladys. Hi, guys. Yeah. Hi. All right. Yeah. Night. Yeah. So, well, Mila, is... in, that, in, in that note of um, um, having women more in the class and becoming more involved. I, uh, you are connected with FMA Connect, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah. So how did you get involved with it? And what is your involvement with FMA Connect? So um, I can't remember who invited me, but um, <laughs> I accepted, <laughs> obviously. I accepted and I was very oh. excited um, that it existed because um yeah to arlene is just awesome she's did an awesome job of it. Oh my God, she's an awesome so person much. yeah she is, Her and Malcolm. She is. yeah they're awesome so um i got so excited because um it's not that there aren't women practicing but to know that there's so many in the nation and the world and and to be able to communicate with you know like trisha like Mm. Yeah, they're Arlene, awesome. You know, Arlene, Patricia, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, there's Maria in the Philippines, and um, so I can connect with all these women all over the place. Um, Anna, and I think she's in Missouri, and they're all doing all these different styles, but um, it's a totally different vibe than like FMA discussion, right? Mm. Um, well, you got more of a is, smaller group of people there, so it's like a more of like a unity, like, like closer. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. So but we got seven thousand people on here, but like half <laughs> we don't even know. Like, so it's like, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, we do a lot of women-based content, which um, is encouraging and supportive, and um, just like in any part where, in any place where you're a minority in another thing. It's always nice to see yourself represented in, in yeah, whatever whatever you identify as. So in this space, it's it's women in FMA. So it's just really great that um, we can we can talk, we can share videos, we can um, encourage each other, we can talk about um, drills, we can you know complain if we want to. <laughs> About guys. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was going to come. I was like, I don't want to say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> yeah, no, but we can uh, definitely come together. And it's, there is so much content in FMA discussion, mm -hmm. like just tons. So there's a lot less to like kind of go through. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's mainly like, we support each other. We encourage each other. Um, I started doing a weekly, like Facebook room, which I'm on hiatus until I move into my new house right now. But um, I started like a weekly hangout session that was based around 
like I'm going to get off my computer or not that I'm getting off my computer, but I work a lot from home and um, I get tired of sitting around and I was like, oh, I love to hang out with these other FMA women and, you know, That's trade, yeah. trade solo drills or, you know, talk about footwork. We share with each other what we do. And That's so good. it was like kind of part, hey, let's let's try techniques or I'll just go outside and punch my bag and then talk. You know, um, I've seen those so, little mini classes you've given before on there. I mean, I I mean, I was snooping around. I probably shouldn't have been, but I was looking oh, at that's some exchange. <laughs> so that was different. Yeah, yeah, I saw so some of the videos. Exchange you're was doing. actually a vehicle that was also designed for the women, but it was also, mm -hmm. you know, we could we could see we could choose to share with with others too. Mm -hmm. So that particular class, I chose to share with everyone because I invited. Um, I invited guys to it too. Mm -hmm. So there was a couple of my students that showed up and, and watched for a little bit and participated. Yeah, yeah like Trisha will come hang Trisha out. Says and kettle she bells. Says, yeah, no, she's, <laughs> she is so badass, y'all. She is such a badass. She is she's an amazing person, like so. Yeah, yeah. Amazing she's woman. So badass. Amazing. So, you know, a lot of the women in there are also not just in the FMA context is they're doing jobs that they're surrounded with men most of the time. Mm -hmm. So it's just nice to hang out and work out. Yeah. So whether the camaraderie uh, building. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally, yeah. It's totally like yeah. fellowship for women, you know, that's good. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Are there, any, are there any projects in, in the pipeline for FMA connect or for you? Uh, or FMA connect, no. I think, Maria is working on some stuff. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so we're excited about that. Um, we are definitely going to be collaborating on some stuff, and when we're ready to share, we'll share. Yeah, yeah, just let us know. That's just let us know. <laughs> yeah. we'll, be to, uh, we'll be able to promote it in FMA discussion. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. 100%. I, I get super excited. I want to train. I want to be able to travel and train. And at least I want the women to travel to me. I want to be able to travel to them mm -hmm. and like get together and train together too. Um, you know, there's women who are fully dedicated. And it's just so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, you think you think you guys will ever have like a uh, FMA Connects like training camp? Yes. Not like yes. a seminar, but like a seminar training camp, yeah. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. For me, that's that's a that's a big, not just a dream, but it's yeah. definitely yeah. a goal. That's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I'm gonna go see to Honarlene in March and train with her. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, when I go to the Philippines, like within a year or two, I would love to see Maria and train with her and. Um, I would love to train with Katie and I was trying to get um, Anna Musong to come down. So I, I'm hoping all we, right. it works. So yeah, okay. I want to train with all these ladies. Like, Yeah, it's awesome. We'll be looking awesome. forward to those videos, <laughs> training videos that you're going to be making. <laughs> well, sure. we, had to, we had to bring down the FMA exchange for a while just because it was just so much work for um to hone our lane to to keep up yeah <clears throat> yeah but um yeah. Yeah. Trisha, i will totally come see you in vancouver when it's not winter <laughs> <laughs> oh come on it's not that cold up there now you get you have to, you have to bring your own shovel <laughs> i'm a florida girl <laughs> Hey, Florida snows too. Anywhere else, in Pensacola, back in '94, it snowed. Not in there. Orlando, honey. <laughs> uh, does snow down there? Uh. No, <laughs> but it, it does get cold. Not for very long. Yeah. But I'm a baby. I'm a big. <laughs> I'm just like I can be too tough about a lot of things, but when it comes to cold, I'm just I turn into a big baby. So oh, we're gonna get snow here Thursday, so it's just to be the high of 19 all day. So. Oh, wow, that makes yeah, my bones hurt. Well, the desert, yeah, it gets a lot of snow. A lot of people think, well, it's a desert. It doesn't get snow. Well, yeah, but well, we got the mountains right here, so it's, it's high mm. desert. No snow over there. <laughs> so, 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 uh, uh, is that is that Vancouver? Uh, is that 
invitation for everybody or is it just for FMA Connect? <laughs> <laughs> you want a gate crash? <laughs> I'm inviting myself. See it? <laughs> Trisha, they're crashing the party. <laughs> crashing the party. If you dress like a woman, I think maybe. <laughs> cool. Okay, Don't forget wait. your hair, Brian. Huh? Don't forget your hair pin. If you dress yeah. like a woman. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah uh, since we're on that topic, I've been a lot of people asking me about those. I appreciate it. Everybody asking about them. Um, but I'm not really making it anymore because for I made one today for somebody that really wanted one, but I don't know about making any mass production ones anymore. So <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a the hair thingies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just kind of I've kind of backed away from a lot of projects. I've been so busy with my son and his band and my own training and teaching, and it's just I really don't have time to be like in at work now. I like got you know. More stuff to do. Same so. here. I've had to say no to a lot of things. I I think that I can do more than yeah. I can, and we can only do so much at the same time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So eventually, if, maybe I'll get back into it in the future. But um, for now, it's just on a case by case basis, I guess, so to speak. So, Trisha well, said, "Everyone, but only FMA connects. Stay at my place." Gladys said. Previous okay. men hey, in the park. Is, is there a Motel Six or a Super Eight I can check into down the street over there? Or do I got sleep in? The, do I got sleep in the rental car? So cross dressing is gonna be the mode of entry or something? Mode of entry. <laughs> I used to go to. I probably shouldn't say. I was probably get arrested in there, but uh, I used to go to like when I used to go. Was a station North Dakota. I used to go through uh, to Brandon, Regina, and. Uh, and Winnipeg drunk all the time to the to the border. They didn't even check. They're just like, I was passed out. And they're like, oh, is your friend asleep? Yeah, he's asleep. He said, I'm like passed out, drunk off my ass. So it's like, just go right through and come right back in again. So yeah, I know how to get to those point of entries. I got to remember, I live, right, I live right next to the I'm border. Reporting. I'm reporting you. Yeah, <laughs> look, 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 out this, look out for this bald guy out here. He's, he's a guy from free. <laughs> he's a drunk. Look out for that guy. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but I know I get. To, we live right here next to Juarez in Mexico. Obviously, you know all the cartel shit they got going on here. And I, when I go to work every day, I have to go through a border patrol entry. It's kind of oh, weird really? because there's so much drugs that gets transported between the cities here in New Mexico. They have to have a border patrol entry, and they just busted I think like two million dollars of meth like four days ago. They had it all oh in the trunk God. of the car. Yeah, so every day I have to go through the border patrol entry with the border patrol agents, and then you know show my thing and then go through. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's a pain in the ass, but you know it's has to be done. Life at the border around here, so yeah, it has to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So any yeah. future projects for you down the road? For me, um, I'm working on a lot of things, um, so I always have projects going on. But right now, I'm working on getting my um, group fitness certification. Oh, awesome. uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, um, just so I can uh, have a more. Are you gonna, gonna get gonna classes? Like online? Yeah, or? I really, I do. I enjoy teaching, so I, I just want to be better at teaching. I know I really enjoy doing like this. I've taken a uh, yoga teacher training, but I really mm -hmm. like to do like um, movement, meditation, and mm -hmm. like functional fitness stuff. And awesome. Kind of good. Mix, That's good. You know, mix some <laughs> of the stuff in my background. I mean, I I've done martial arts for a while now. Just don't forget the FMA discussion for homie discount, right? <laughs> the <course>. homie discount. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I taught recently at a women's retreat, and um, it was it was really cool because I brought in some FMA stuff, not like uh -huh. true FMA, but mm -hmm. just principles of like. It was more on a on a spiritual sense of like standing up for yourself, standing in your power. But then I like introduced the stick to them and basic strikes. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, there's women who I was like telling them to destroy something. So mm -hmm. we had a session of like, you know, hit hit this, destroy this stuff with the stick, like let it out, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All these different things. 
Um, so a lot of it was based around um, introducing, yeah, instead of saying masculine, like saying that there is a spectrum of yin to yang. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, a broader feminine spectrum so that, you know, you can claim either you don't have to be girly and you can still mm -hmm. be a woman. You can be womanly and also be a warrior or yeah. you know, be able to bring that within yourself. Yeah. So I think, I think so, same, it's healthy for men too, to be able to mm -hmm. like express themselves healthy in their yang and also be able to do things that are more yin like creativity yeah. and mm. introspection and you know, things like that so yeah. so, so when, uh, when you're hitting the, when you're hitting those sticks just make sure there's none of these faces on those uh on those targets <laughs> when you hit them <laughs> we don't want to make anybody mad over here yeah <laughs> so yeah i don't want to see a guru tom or you know or my or my face on those things <laughs> i don't hate you guys you guys the pads. Cool. <laughs> oh, man, the pads. Uh, uh, I'm switching uh, your heads <laughs> right now. <laughs> hey, someone's going to take it. You're not, you're not screenshotting, are you? I don't want to screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get off the thing on there. <laughs> wow, this, is, this has been great. This has been fun. I like it. This is like probably one of the funnest interviews I've done in a long time. So uh, you're awesome, Miss Mila. Um, you're great too. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, but this has been great. So, Guru Tom, any final thoughts or? No, I, it, it has been a very uh, uh, fantastic been interview with Mila. It's so yeah. chill, like to talk to you and yeah. like, vibe with yeah. it. So it's like other women are kind of like, oh, I better be careful. I want to say this, you know, shut the venom. And it's like with you, it's kind of like <laughs> I don't like to say anything, but I mean, I can hold on. Like, let me let me just put this in perspective. I like I'm not old, but I'm 43. So I'm very, <laughs> like I had my period of being lost and being kind of a fuck up uh -huh. and I'm not lost anymore. I know mm. myself. I found myself. FMA helps me find myself even to greater depths. And so I don't give a shit sometimes if I offend people. Yeah. And I'm the I same way. The, I know when yeah. to put the filter on for certain audiences. Yeah, yeah of course. But I I feel confident in in being able to communicate what issues are between men and women, mm -hmm. right? And yep. I feel confident as a woman, you know, navigating around men's spaces, and also mm -hmm. as a woman who knows how to um, embrace sisterhood, which yeah. is hard for a lot of women because it's not in our current society we haven't had the same um, spaces to um culturally um mm -hmm. nurture that yeah that's so true. we've been yeah, separated true. from the those spaces where, you know, <clears> damn we, right yeah yeah no i mean we might yeah, have been true. weaving together and cooking together and telling stories and we don't necessarily have that anymore so now we have to recreate it yeah so that's yeah. why in the women's retreat i'm cool with that like i'm very good with that you know training <clears> songs and stories and then i can also hang with the dudes it's fine Hmm. Ms. Trisha, but which more FMA men would see the beauty and masculinity in dance? Does it does a does a cumbia count or anything? <laughs> asking asking for a friend, asking for a friend. No, you know what? I do think I do think it would be healthy for men to um, be able to embrace things like yoga and singing and dance um, without feeling like they're being too feminine or. Yeah. Right, yeah. I think you can practice being very. Um, I think we'll get there. You can't be rigid and hard yeah. all the time. You have to be able to be soft, and then no mm -hmm. one to be, no one to pick your fights. You know, mm -hmm. no one to choose your battles. You know, you can't muscle through everything all the time. It's not healthy. Yeah, you you have to learn how to be how to be how to become refined, how to be finished. You gotta have you gotta have a balance. I mean, you gotta have that. You know. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, That's true. so I guess my last yeah. note is, you know, not just because we're women, but when you listen to more, when you, you know, ask the right questions, you'll see the value of a woman's perspective mm -hmm. within this forum too. Amen to that. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's really it's valuable true. to men too. It's not just women, you know? Mm. Mm. Well, it's great. Yeah. You got some great, great exactly points true. on there, mate. Exactly true. Yeah. Great points yeah. on there. But I want, mm. yeah, we had a lot of people watching. So <laughs> if we didn't get to your questions, I'm sorry. We're having too good of a time over here. So, um, love you, Gladys. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, was she just in there? Oh, she left. <laughs> uh, okay. She was just there behind you. <laughs> she's like, like a sister to me. She's one of my best friends. I absolutely love awesome. her. <laughs> That's awesome. But, but, um, it was a fantastic interview with you, Mila. Yeah, Thank we you. had Thank fun. You. Thank you for breaking up the monotony and, and the seriousness and, and, and having fun. Yeah. And and speaking your mind, it's been refreshing. It's, been it's, awesome. it's, it's 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 worth basically me sleeping at this time of the morning. <laughs> okay, okay, stop complaining. No, 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 no. But yeah, uh, it is. It it was. It was. It was really a great fun. interview with you. Yeah, yeah. I like it. We're we do. We do. Hope. We do hope that we get more uh, female practitioners. We we, we yeah. have a couple coming up next month. I I've been lining a lot of females. Uh, it sounds so damn sinister. I've been trying to get a lot of, uh, I've been trying to get a lot of women on here, and I have a couple <laughs> next this month. Actually, I have uh, uh, two or three women and next month. Two women, um, all different ethnicities. I have a uh, 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 white, you know, Filipino, African American. So I've been, I've been, I've been working it, guys. I've been working it. I've been putting the work in. Good job, Ryan. Good job. Yeah. So yeah. So. It's the Valentino there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, before you go, I want to go ahead and put a, a link for your artwork, or tell people how we can. If yeah. You're interested in buying your art? How we can um, get access to it? Like, want to contact you? And also um, for Kyan's website too, for his for his blades. Um, okay. Have like a link to put on there or anything or. Yeah, I mean, I I'll sent you some links, you. but I can send them to you again. But my my Instagram is Mila Bell Art, okay. Bell with an E at the end, M I L A B E L L E Art, mm -hmm. and um, our website for um, SD Kali is sdkali.com. dot com. Awesome, awesome. And there's some blade stuff on there, um, and blades yeah. are S gorgeous, custom gorgeous blades. blades. Yeah. Gorgeous, um, and I am gonna get some artwork sometime. So don't blast yeah. me. I know some people are gonna blast me on here. Like this guy <laughs> talking all kinds of shit about it. Or they ain't bought no damn artwork. So well, there'll be place guys. I can I can put um I can put like the flyer for our retreat coming up in a week. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Feel free to post. Yep, yep, yep. All feel the stuff. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, yeah, feel free to post. Thanks for vibing with me, y'all, and having me on. Really yeah, it's been awesome. It. I saw you were drinking something. I wish I would have had some wine too, so I could just toasted you. A little Pinot Noir, you know. Oh, me, damn, me too. Straight up, I like that with the good beef, with a good steak or something. Yeah. In fact, I was looking at a bottle right now over here. So next time we have an interview, we're all gonna drink. We can just hang out some time and it not be live. At yeah. Time. And we're gonna hear it. We're all gonna drink. Yeah. You too, Guru Tom. You have a nightcap. Shot of whiskey. Tea. I love tea. <laughs> We got, we got to do the virtual high five now, like to the side. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for accepting the invite. And thank you for chilling out with us and goofing off and, and having right. fun. And that's what all we're right. all about. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Have and, a great night. Yep. And reminder if you missed this interview with Mila, it's going to be up in YouTube. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. Uh, please. All, the, all the monetary gains that we get from there goes to charity. charity. Yeah. Yeah. We don't keep a dime. I'm going to tell some of my Gurdjie voice. We do not <clears throat> keep a dime. We do not keep a penny. It all goes to charity. <laughs> that was a poor Gurdjie in person. Per <laughs> that's, that's I try, funny. guys. I try. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, yeah. <laughs> For the rest of the week, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, I clicked. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Hey, get me off already. <laughs> See? Hold on. Yeah. Like, like a jackass. He cut me off in there. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching, guys. That was fun. Yeah, thank you very much, yeah. everyone. Everybody who stuck with us for this uh, okay. nearly two hours. Yeah, brilliant. Cheers, Ryan. Good Tom. Good Tom. Get some rest. You deserve yeah. it. All right. Good night. See you next, see you Good next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everybody. Right. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Once again, this is Guru Tom Pena for FMA Discussion Episode 252 with Miss Mila Bell. Stay safe, guys.